Alright folks, here we are back at the Chicago Dota 2 Open held at the Ignite Gaming Lounge sponsored by Ignite, Steel Series, Dust Off, and Merlini Dota. And we've reached the Merlini 1v1 Prepare portion of the day. Battle. So it's gonna be uh, so each game is Merlini versus somebody who uh, we're gonna have nameless people each time, although I'm sure if they beat Merlini they'll be willing to trumpet their name to the heavens, but they're just gonna be called Merlini Victim. We did this in June. Uh, we played I think four or five games. Merlini won all but one, but in one of them he got a little greedy, went for a courier, and actually lost. So I believe you get a prize regardless of whether you win or lose, but if you do manage to beat Merlini, then uh, you get a substantially bigger prize, plus the pride of telling all your friends that you defeated an X like top tier pro player in a 1v1 mid challenge. So uh, you saw the rules up on stream. Uh, basically, you can go for runes, so runes are in play. I believe you cannot bottle crow. Uh, I don't I don't think Soul Ring is allowed either. And the way that the heroes are determined is that there's a pool of eight commonly known mid heroes. You roll for one of them, and then it's same hero and mid only, obviously. So in this game, it's going to be Viper versus Viper. And I'm Vikramon. Joining me again is El Presidente. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. I'm kind of disappointed that Meepo isn't an available option. <laughs> Uh, Meepo is not available, that's true. Uh, I was also... I wanted Io, because I think Io is the, <laughs> the new hotness. The Plus, new Io hotness. versus Io is just a great matchup. So much geometry. I don't know. I, I remember there being really hilarious bugs involving two tethers being up at the same time. Uh, maybe. They might have fixed that. Uh, for a I while, you, there were horrible Meepo bugs, because if you had more than one Meepo in the game, the game would not know which additional Meepo was whose. Uh, so, oh, yeah, for instance, yeah. you could die and have half of your Meepos respawn to the opposing fountain. Which is yeah, that was funny. Which is not good. <laughs> no, the, the Wisp bug I was talking about, though, is if two Wisps on the same team tethered each other. What what happened? You would crash the game. Oh, no. You, really? You would, you would cause an overflow bug because of the uh, regen. That's funny. <laughs> But, the, but uh, the, in this case, it would be one versus... It would be opposing team Wisps, so they wouldn't be able to tether each other. This is this is all true, but uh, Viper versus Viper. Yeah. So, what do you know about the Viper Viper matchup? Well, I don't know anything about the Viper. This okay. is the first time I've seen it. Yeah. But I cannot say that a bottle is probably very helpful in this matchup by virtue uh, of how. This is actually well, another case in which there's a pretty serious uh, bug potentially. I think this was fixed, but corrosive skin used to proc corrosive skin. Um, mm. so, <laughs> this could hopefully be funny. this match will not be over in sub five seconds, but it's possible that it will. So one thing that you could do, I, I have to think this was fixed because this actually comes up in pubs. You can, uh, for instance, create a morphling replicate of a viper and, uh, it, it has the corrosive skin. So if the viper shoots the, the viper... Or actually, if any of the Vipers shoots each other, it would cause the death of one or both. So I, I think this is fixed, but we'll have to see. Either way, I mean, I'm actually really interested to see both the skill builds and the item builds. So Merlini has gone less stats, and I think if you're confident that your sort of mechanics are going to be tip-top, you can go for a little bit less in the way of stats and a little bit more regen, because you don't know if the other person is going to harass you, but you know that your last hit is going to be rock solid. So you can see that his uh, damage is actually pretty low. Viper's not that high damage of a character, baseline, simply because his skills give him such amazing last hit utility, particularly Nether Toxin. So he's gone six tangos, two salves, and then four branches, whereas the, the victim has gone three tangos, uh, three branches, and agility. So way less regen, but a lot more, a little more last hit potency. What do you think about these different builds? Merlini definitely has the edge. He has more health for only two less damage, as well as more regen. I really don't like another Toxin first. If Merlini opts to go for a level 1 poison attack, he's going to be able to actually harass Merlini victim out of lane. Mostly because another Toxin is great for adding a little bit of last hit potential, but it's still at most only 20 damage when uh, hitting against creeps. Sure. So that that's not very good at level 1. Honestly, poison attack, corrosive skin, I think in the mid matchup are going to be more important. Also, I'm not sure if Nether Toxin works on denies, so... I think it does. 
But it probably does. Merlini did do one thing already. Oh man, the block is just really superior for Merlini here. It's completely yeah, on his there. turf. He's using poison tech to harass. He knows where the rune is because he used his shitty wizard to scout it out. So he knows that there's a DD rune bottom. The Merlini victim doesn't know where the rune is. Already chased off lane out of XP range. Oh man, this could be a pretty brutal first game, Alprez. What does the victim yeah, have to do here to try to get back in it? Well, frankly. He's got to abandon all hope for a bottle at this point. Honestly, I don't think the bottle is going to be too significant, especially because the rules state that it's only one kill or one tower. Right. Right, so sustain isn't going to be the biggest thing. It's really going to be all about that burst. The big problem is that his skill build is not going to help him out in this matchup. As you can see, Merlini even skipped out on Nether Toxin because, again, it's not that much damage at level 1. Right. On the other hand, by using Poison Attack, he can keep harassing, and yeah. if Merlini tries to harass back, he's going to get Nether Toxin. Yeah, and Merlini has, uh, Mer So Merlini took a Corrosive, too, so if there's yeah. any attempt to counter-harass, it's going to be pretty much vetoed by the Corrosive skin. Let's see what he... Yeah, two in attack. So Merlini Victim, I mean, now that he's under tower, the situation's slightly more stable, but not really, because Viper's range is just fine. So the harass is a tremendous issue, coupled with the fact that he did yep. not really bring any regen to the lane. So. The, the other big problem for the Merlini victim, right, is that if he does try to harass, he's going to get slowed heavily. And because he brought so little regen to this lane, he's going to have a nightmare keeping up. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's already out of tangos, so he's going to have to deliver some regen. Actually, he's taking a lot of damage here, down to about 170 after this corrosive skin finishes ticking. And he's, yeah, I mean, he's sending a salve over on his speed demon, and that's pretty much the story here. We have 11-2 last hits denies for Merlini. Zero for zero on the victim, which is a very, very tough position to find yourself in two minutes into the game. There was one thing I just totally forgot about, is that the Corrosive Skin also reduces the magical damage it takes. It does, yeah. Which means that the po poisons, which is a vast majority of a Viper's damage once you hit level 6, will be significantly less uh, damaging, just because you have those extra points in Corrosive yeah. Skin. So even in these trades, yeah. Merlini, even without the Corrosive Skin damage, would be getting ahead. Right. Yeah, but even with the damage added on, it's just a tremendous effect. He has chosen to put another a point in Nether Toxin after all. I mean, it will uh, once he gets this, once he gets his opponent below half health, which is just below right now. That Nether Toxin will add a decent amount of extra damage. I mean, it's a maximum of forty if they're very low, so it'll help that harass really convert into a kill in the first blood. And really, I mean, he's just really using the rule set here. He knows it's to first blood. He knows that, you know, you can't bottle crow or anything, although he has gotten the bottle because he has superior rune knowledge. Like, whenever he wants to refill this, he can just head to the DD. And so he's just harassing oh, the victim down that's, completely. Wait, that's a DD. Yeah, what's yeah, that DD? I think Merlini's already won this. He knows it's a DD, too, because he scouted yeah, it. Uh-oh, this could actually be the, the kill here. Very low, one more hit, yeah. Merlini's going to take this first one. Coming out pretty crisp from Ben Wu here. Uh, I, we haven't seen him around. or I, I know he's been streaming, but I haven't seen him since uh, TI3, but that was some... Pretty crisp victory for the first game. Oh, no GG. Dang. Dang. Alright, alright. I, I remember hearing glorious stories about how Merlini used to be the demon of Dota. Like, uh, <laughs> EG demon. EG demon? Alright. Well, anyway, folks, we'll go into the next game in just a second. All right, game two of the solo mid challenge at the Chicago Dota 2 Open is about to start. We've got Queen of Pain versus Queen of Pain, uh, and it's Merlini once again Queen will be fighting against uh, an unnamed victim. We'll see what, we'll, we'll, if they win, I mean, I'm sure we'll know their names. I know that in the first 
time we did this in June, we had the uh, Avukamu of Team, I believe, Altered... Was he an Altered State? I think it was an Altered State. He actually won against Merlini. But this time around, Merlini undefeated so far, 1-0. We're going to be playing Queen of Pain this time. And I know this is a hero that he likes playing, but it is also the hero that he lost on last time. So joining us once again, uh, Elprez, how you doing? I'm doing quite well. Yeah, I don't know... Merlini always kind of favored these high mobility int mid heroes. Mm. Storm Spirit, well, I say high mobility, but his signature hero was Zeus, who was about as mobile as you get. But I don't know, it's hard to say. I mean, I think it's really going to come down to that. Is, in the last game, I feel like some of the really important decisions made were really even before the game, like some of the early item loadout the skill builds to start out with, as well as uh, sending the, the courier to scout was a really uh, smart move on Merlini's part there as well. We do have a pause, I think somebody's setting up their settings. So, uh, Queen of Pain versus Queen of Pain, what's the key to this matchup? For me, I think it's really gonna come down to a level one Shadow Strike, follow it up. Really, I don't think Blink is gonna be the biggest deal in, in a 1v1 solo mid, unless you're planning on diving. And I, I say that because Queen Pain's abilities aren't really that large range, right? So if in a Queen of Pain versus Queen of Pain engagement, it's all going to be about who gets the Scream of Pain off first. And if you blink in, it gives the other person time to react and just click E, right? Yeah. That said, I think Shadow Strike is going to be the primary harassing component because it does do 200 damage at level 1. Yeah, it's so. definitely an enormous amount of harassment that you could put out. Did you see the um, the Queen of Pain versus Queen of Pain game at the at TI3, the Grand Finals? Not the Grand Finals, uh, but the Winners Finals? I don't yeah, remember who, who, who was the combo. I... It was Ice Ice Ice, Ice versus 430. Uh, no, I didn't get to see that. I saw, so I saw Ice Cube's glorious Timber Chain. The Timber Chain through the... with the Invisible Through the trees into Mushi? the Invisible... Yeah. Money. Timber... Ice 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 Ice, ice, ice Cubed, Ice... I don't, I don't know. Three ice? I just say ice, ice, ice. Um, but that I was... Know, I, like, I, I like ice cubed. Uh, that... that timber chain, I mean, that, that series in general, I think I actually got hyper for the finals of the 1v1s than I did for any of the games. I got pretty hyped for the games, but when... Um, I was cheering for ice, ice, ice through the entire 1v1 tourney because everybody was kind of uh, crapping on the selection. People were like, oh, there's way better 1v1 players. Why would you put ice, ice, ice? And because then, Ice, Ice Ice is hilarious. Because he's hilarious, and he picks the best heroes, and he won the tournament. So uh, yeah, when he I, beat when he beat Mushi, when he got the first blood on Puck against Mushi, I just scree I lost my voice because I was screaming so loud because I was so happy because I knew that if he won the Puck game, like that he would win the tournament because I'm, he, I was really worried for him the whole time about Shadow facing Shadow Fiend against like good yeah. Asian mid players. Like against S4, it's fine, because you know S4 is not practicing 1v1 Shadow Fiend all day. So it was okay that well, he lost the Axe game and won the Magnus, because he, he knew that he could win the Shadow Fiend. But then against 430 and Mushi, like, how are you going to win SF versus SF against them? But if you if you can beat them on the gim on their their hero, you can definitely beat them on the Ice SS gimmick hero. I think the only problem for Ice SS versus Mushi is that Mushi is probably one of the best mid farmers. Yeah. Right, whenever he does play, well, mid, he, he outlasted him even on Timbersaw. Like Mushi got more last hits on Timbersaw, but yeah, and and it just comes down to the fact that Mushi's just a better farmer than Ice Ice right. Ice. But Ice 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 is a fantastic playmaker, and that really showed in the Timbersaw matchup. Yeah, it it, it came down to just a clutch timber chain begins. with uh with the glorious spin, but you know the Timbersaw versus Timbersaw matchup just comes down to whirling death. So, uh, and yeah, to some extent. Oh man, he gets his courier sniped. That was very smart of the victim. Maybe they were watching the previous game, seeing that Merlini likes to do that courier spotting, and that's actually a pretty big deal because it uh even if they get outlasted a little bit, I didn't know the courier counts as the last hit. By the way, that's kind of neat. Um, so now they only need maybe like three ish last hits to actually get their bottles. So that's gonna be a huge deal, even if they get out mechanic a little bit. The one not so great thing is they've got blink. Uh, because and Merlini has yeah. Shadow Strike, so that's already a little bit of harassment that he couldn't put out that the victim really can't. And he secures damage. a DD rune for himself as well, and this is actually really, really troublesome, because the DD rune combined with another Shadow Strike is just going to take away, considering the fact that the victim already used their only salve, Merlini's just going with the same build, two salves, Denied. four branches, five, six tangos. 
Oh man, this is gonna be really, really tough, actually. The courier snipe was really smart, but now they're in a lot of trouble. I really like this, uh, the victim's build this time as far as items are concerned. I was discussing again, I don't think Blink is gonna be that significant in this matchup. That said, you know, one point doesn't hurt, but level one, it, it doesn't contribute anything. Like, what are you gonna do? Escape a little bit more? It doesn't matter if you're low enough health for the Shadow Strike to kill you anyways. Yeah. Right now, their mechanics are just kind of suffering. They're missing a lot of last hits, not able to use that courier uh, to don't trade. the fast bottle. And they're forced to blink back to the to the tower. I don't know. Merlini's victim was trying to trade a little bit with DD Merlini, and that that doesn't work. When the you biggest don't have problem... the DD, it's very, very difficult to trade. But that said, they pick up a few last hits here. Uh, probably going to get their bottle, I think. The, it, this was definitely a bottle-saving build, Winter's the, yeah, this... the initial item. Oh, no. oh, man, this is a lot of trouble. They actually blink back. Uh, can you blink? I'm pretty sure you can blink a shock the uh, Shadow Strike hit. If you're yeah, you can just join Shadow Strike. It's a projectile. But yeah. he still got hit by it. The problem yeah. was... The bigger problem, because Merlini lost the courier, is that he's really going to get delayed on his uh, bottle. That's by true. By a, a full minute. Right. right. And that's a big problem. <laughs> uh, but Merlini, again, still has nice. by far more superior mechanics here. So he is just outlast hitting the victim pretty dramatically and doesn't yeah. help that. I mean, DD room definitely helps with that. Uh, but 9 6 to 4 2 definitely has the advantage. He gets lucky and finds oh. the rune out. So that's going to be a. Considering the fact that you cannot bottle crow, that's a huge deal to take that rune away from Merlini victim, who just brought his bottle. So that completely nullifies the advantage of the bottle, except basically as a salve plus mana potion. Uh, that's, yeah, tough break for Merlini Victim there, definitely. They've converged to the same build, though, and they, he did manage to actually get the blink to cancel the Shadow Strike that time. I I would like to see Merlini Victim actually pick up wards so he can try to get some runes better. Right. That said, it doesn't really mean anything if Merlini tries to gamble on a rune. Oh. Using that level advantage, level 4 versus level 3 gives him level 2 Shadow Strike, sorry, level 2 Scream of Pain versus level 1, and... That actually gives him even more of a health edge. Of course, his bottle is still in the fountain because he doesn't have. He just got his courier back, but that's going to be delivered right now. And Merlini victim, uh, they're completely out of regen as well. Whereas Merlini still has one salve in the tank. Is there a way for Merlini victim back into this? Do you think it's wards and securing the next couple of runes? Well, he definitely needs the runes. In the Queen of Pain versus Queen of Bane matchup, if you get the bottle, it comes down to the Denied. runes. You get a DD, you get an invis. Even illusions oh, can be helpful in this matchup, right? That's still a little bit of extra damage, but I think, uh, obviously, Invis, Haste, DD, those are going to be more important for getting these kills. But more importantly, it's about sustain, right? Queen of sure. Pain matchups is all about kind of harassing down the opponent with your Shadow Strike and your right clicks. And when they get low enough, blink into them, Shadow uh, Scream, they die. Right. That's what happens. And, frankly, Without enough sustain, you're oh, gonna lose that fight, and uh, I think Merlini might be getting hate first yep. blood here. Uh, Haste rune picked up. He's level four. Gets level five after one more last hit. Actually, I think the catapult might give him enough. XP. Yeah, it does. So they're actually both. Uh, they're both gonna be level five in a second. So that's good for Merlini victim. But if he falls behind, Merlini can really use this haste rune to punish him. He can even use Sal if he wants to. That's already quite low for victim. He doesn't chase under tower, but. I think this sends him to Fountain. Oh, he had a salve on the ground, actually, so he's okay. Yeah, he's going to be okay for now, but he's running dangerously low on mana. Merlini, again, could have just popped. He's sending a clarity. He might have built the dive. Oh, Merlini. Uh, Merlini, he's getting kind of low, but he has haste and He knows he can escape no matter what. Like, he's still pretty high, yeah. He can haste yeah, all the way back to Fountain if he wants, but he doesn't want to. He's got all this bottle regen pulled up. Clarity brought out for Merlini Victim. He obviously has to wait. Oh no, he's in a lot of trouble now. Merlini using this haste and He's getting under the tower. How good are your jukes? This is the question. Oh. Can you juke? He jukes so far. He's doing okay, but Merlini knows where he is now. Or he might. He actually doesn't see him just yet. Now he's north. Merlini still hasn't found him out, and he's forced to flee. Really nice juking there, actually. That was. Yeah, that was very close. Very, very similar builds to these guys at this point. Definitely converged to the same skill build, the same item build. At this point, it's Branch Bottle Wand for both. Uh, pretty efficient on the part of Victim, even though he's getting some regen. He's doing okay still, even at a pretty big deficit of last hits and denies. And so, I mean, those jukes kept him alive. We gotta give uh, due props to those. Yeah, that was very impressive juking. <sighs> I don't know, though. They're both... Well, Merlini's fountaining, so this is actually the time... For, for the victim to catch up, right? Get, get some gold. 
the problem is because he came to lane with less regen, right? He was forced back earlier. And because he was forced back earlier, he lost on XP. And because of that, he's going to get forced back more often. So that was big downside to just keep on starting with less regen, right? Merlini, as a result, was able to stay in lane longer, get more XP. And he hits his level 6 before the victim. Yeah. By uh, a full 300 XP. Room. Uh, this is really strong at 0-0. Zero, zero. It's still really strong now just because when you're behind mechanically, like in terms of last hits, having those three two extra illusions is going to be a huge deal. But unfortunately, they eat a skirm of pain. He's going to lose them extremely quickly, and that's really not what you want out of your illusions. You want them to give you sort of as much of an advantage in the actual last hitting as possible, and so losing them this early is going to be really, really tough. He does oh, land a good yeah. skirm of pain, and he's got ult available, so uh, Merlini actually, yeah, he's forced to play a little more carefully now because that was... Uh, Potentially a little, little rough. Drops it, uses bottle regen. You doing that smart, uh, maximizing by dropping stats to make sure that you get all the regen value out of the bottle. Yeah, it. it, it all right. What's Why don't you tell people about that if they don't know how that works? Because we might have people. Oh, okay. Here. Yeah, that, that 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 sounds like a good idea. So branches and magic one, all stat items give stats, and the stats increase your max from mana pool, uh, as well as health pool. But the regen always gives a fixed amount. Every single region item. I say this, but you know, mana region items. Are exactly oh man, blood. Merlini gets the first blood. As you were explaining that, I'm so, so sorry. So, so much for me explaining that, because right before that, I was going to explain why the Queen of Pain matchup is really volatile once you hit level six. Right. It's because the burst times. damage is like 700. Pretty close in the end, but Merlini uh, was he higher level? I think he was nah, he, slightly he was higher level, or had another couple branches for extra stats, and that lets you. If you trade the exact same spells, even at the same level, if you have a little more stats, you'll win. And that's really the, the lesson of that. Merlini takes the second attack. game. Uh, I'll have you explain the stats thing when we start the yeah. next game. Sorry about that, dude. I, I think the... Vi oh, yeah. Two more branches. Made the difference. Yeah. Yeah, it's those extra two branches, actually, are a huge deal. All right, folks. Chicago Dota 2 Open, Merlini solo mid-challenge game three. Looks like we're going to have a reprise of Queen of Pain again. We roll uh, eight possibilities. So it's uh, Lashrak, Puck, Pudge, Quap, Shadowfiend, and Storm Spirit, Viper, and Windrunner are the possibilities for the 1v1 tournament. This time we're going to have Queen of Pain once again. Merlini so far 2-0 today. This is game three. We'll see if his hapless victim this time does manage to put up a fight. The second game, actually, uh, I thought the victim did pretty well. In the end, Merlini just had a little bit superior last hitting, used it to get some bonus stats, and then knew that he would confidently be able to win the trade. But uh, courier sniping has become a thing, so no longer completely safe to just check runes with courier. They can get sniped out, so maybe we'll see that happen again this game. I'm Vikramond, co casting with me is El Presidente. How you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing quite well. All right, so I was forced to cut you off, but why don't you explain uh, just really quick why people drop stat items when they're going to bottle to regen. All right, so just for an example to make it a little bit easier, and I normally have a calculator out to make the numbers more pretty, but let's say you have 100 mana, and you get a branch, and so now you have 113 mana. You have zero actual mana, but 113 max, and you use a clarity. You'll now have 50 out of 113 mana, right? Mm -hmm. That's the, uh, 50 out of one. Is it 50? No, it's 100, isn't it? Got to check these items. No. Yeah, it's 100. All right, you'll have 100 out of uh, 113 mana, right? 
So you're still missing that 13 mana, and that's 13 mana that the branch gave you. But if you drop the branch and then use the clarity, you'll get up to 100% mana, 100 out of 100. Right. But if you pick up the branch, because the proportions will remain the same, the percentage of mana you have will not change no matter how many additional statums you get, you'll actually have 113 mana of 113 mana after picking up the branch. So it's always better to drop the stat items to, uh, to heal and then to right. pick them up later. Right. The danger because of the preservation of percentages when you add stats, yeah. Yeah, right. but the danger is if you drop items, it's possible for an opponent to snipe those items while they're on the ground. Right. Which means that you uh, you will possibly lose those items and the benefits associated with them. Really needs us doing the same build, and I actually really like his position up here. He has high ground vision, so he can see practically all of this area here. Yeah. You can see that in the absence of crowing, he still values bottle, like he's still going to go bottle on this creative pain, but he doesn't value it so much that he's going to sacrifice that critical early regen in a, in a first to first blood game to, to do it. So he's not going to pool money to save for the bottle. He will get the bottle with his first 600, but he feels that the regen is more important. Whereas the victims consistently have been pooling for bottles, so they think that as long as they can get room control, they can still take control of it. So here we see very, very standard three tangos, one salve, four branches, whereas Merlini has the has the same thing, but then another the extra set of salves and, and uh, tangos. It sort of reminds me of um, that whole discussion that Clairvoyance had during the 1v1 Shadowfiend, where it's like, in Shadowfiend versus Shadowfiend, the best starting build is no region, wraith, and two branches. And I'm getting... A little bit concerned for the victim already. His block was really poor, and he already started with level one blink. Yeah, blink is gonna be. I mean, he can use it to try to dodge out shadow strikes uh, if he can. No uh, let's see if he it. Nope, didn't get it that time. Uh, and yeah, is he wasn't able to block, so it's on extremely favorable turf for Merlini. Queen of Pain, very high range hero, so he's just really able to blink away from an extremely safe distance on the high ground onto the victim. So already three denies. He may actually deny almost every creep in this wave, which is very, very t a tough st way to start for the victim. Yeah, he actually, he's he's perfect on last hits right now. Ouch. Oh, oh he nope, missed that one. But, still. <laughs> but uh, because he ended up denying five creeps now, right? Instead of like the 60 XP that melee creeps usually give, he's only getting 16 each. Right. And that really shows in the levels, right? Merlini Absolutely. is already 186 out of 200, but the victim is a full 50 XP behind. Right. Uh, Actually, why don't you talk to me about four. Radiant vs. Dire in these one-to-one -one matchups? Um, I think it's the Dire has a slightly easier creep, uh, creep block if you're, you know, good at creep blocking because the creeps always spawn in a certain way, whereas on Radiant they can get split up sometimes. Mm -hmm. But... I, uh, also, when you're on Radiant, you also run the risk of this high ground because the high ground is a very easy place to initiate onto this mid lane. Oh. Oh, that was actually a very clever blink, but he blinked oh, right into Oh, man, he's instead. so low. I think he's that, done. The Shadow Strike, strike alone would kill him, but Merlini picks that him off. And a very quick and merciful disposing, as I really don't think the, the victim had much of a chance in this one. Wasn't able to put up a single last hit by the end. And Merlini, uh, what is that, 3 3 and 0 now? Four, uh, yeah, three and Can this man be stopped? I, I guess we'll see. All right, folks. I don't know, Vic. You, you, you should challenge the man. Right. <laughs> Radiant's wow, middle harsh. tower is under attack. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Let's go to the next game.
All right, folks, here we are at the Chicago Dota 2 Open, the Merlini 1 vs. 1 challenge portion of the tournament. And, oh, great, we have Shadow Fiends. So the, the random hero rolled out of the 8 hero pool this time was SF. The pool is, just to remind you folks, Lashrak, Puck, Pudge, Quap, SF, Storm Spirit, Viper, Windrunner. We've had two Queen of Pain games, and we've had, uh, Prepare what's the first battle. game? Viper. And here we go with Shadow Fiend. So this is the classic mid matchup. Uh, it's pretty much what everybody practices 1v1 mid on when they do. Uh, it's one of the most popular formats in China and Southeast Asia where they do a lot of 1v1 midding. And it's a very exciting matchup in the sense that it's extremely skill based. And, uh, my co caster Elprez is still here with us. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about this matchup and especially some of these uh, so the different item choices here? All right, so this is actually a really interesting build out of Merlini's Victim. It actually gives him very comparable damage with slightly more armor and lets him get to the lane with a regen. The problem is it takes up four of his inventory slots for, for stats, where Merlini only takes up three. And he also starts with significantly less tank, right? right. So I think Merlini's going to be completely fine with his build. It's actually going to let him trade a lot easier, but when you're talking about 1v1 Shadow Fiend, it's all about mechanics. It comes down to just your raw ability to last hit versus another player. Right. And not misclicking when using hotkeys to um, yeah. start up stats. Because I have I have many times accidentally done control E instead of control D. The battle begins. And leveled up raise instead of necromastery. Yeah, uh, they spot the runes, so they both know where the runes are. I have to say, I, I do think the build is interesting from Radiant, but... I think the Wraith Band Two Branches is probably better, and the the reason I think this is um, the main thing for me is just you have higher armor, but the problem is not Shadow Fiend's piddling attack damage as far as harass goes. You primarily get harassed with Rays, and your HP is lower. A so 454 to 530 HP, and B uh, the mana pools are substantially different. So the uh, Radiant can only Shadow Raise three times in a row. Uh, Merlini can actually Shadow Raise a, a full extra time, so he gets a full four Shadow Raises with his mana pool. And that could make a, an enormous difference, honestly, especially pre-bottle. We're already seeing Merlini starting off to a slight edge. He has equal last hits, but he has two denies, so he's a little bit behind on gold, but he's ahead on XP. Yeah. I think both players so far are doing okay. Nice deny there by Radiant, actually. Uh, it's pretty long distance, but he scopes it out. But Merlini, using the terrain advantage. Uh, he had a very smart creep block here. He did the uh, block three creeps, let one go. So uh, that pushed the lane pretty hard once that first creep died very quickly. Additionally, his emphasis on denies over uh, last hits very early allowed him to pull the lane back even further. That said, it is equalizing a little bit. And actually, uh, in terms of pure last hits, we got one five, so... Uh, Merlini Victim actually already has six souls, whereas Merlini only has four. So that's a kind of a substantive advantage, although it's catching, it's closing a bit now. One nice of the big problems there. was really that, uh, yeah, one of the problems for the Victim was that he was spending a lot of time very far from the creeps, and the projectile travel time ended up biting him a couple of times for those last hits. Right. Merlini delivering tangos. Whoa, completely missed raise there, unfortunately, for Merlini Victim. I don't know what happened there. Uh, it looked like he just misclicked because he also used the key rays instead of any other rays, so that was the one that was like, yeah. That that seems like it was a misclick, but um. Yeah. Oh, well, that's too bad. Um, like I said, his mana pool is a little bit lower, so he can't afford to miss any raises. Whereas every oh, oh. legacy <laughs> keys, grim in the grim darkness of the far present, legacy keys are still a thing. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, with his lower mana pool, he can't afford to, like, miss any like that, so that's really unfortunate for him. Now getting fairly out last hit, so Merlini maxed out his souls, uh, victim's only at 9, and every one of these Merlini raises has been hyper on point. Yeah, he's really harassing him very, very hard now. Using that, the extra mana to just push him all the way out. He still has one more raise available. If that one lands... Oh, man, only one of those two landed, and he, he needed both of those really, really desperately. Yeah, he's falling kind of behind on last hits. Luckily, it's not as big of a deal right now because Merlini is max on souls, but being behind on souls is never a good sign. Oh, yeah, he shouldn't he have gone for Merlini, that raise. He doesn't get the last hit, and it's very, very tough because he's still on 10... He's now at a 4 souls deficit, so that's about 8 auto attack damage difference, right? 2 damage per soul, yeah. Yeah, 
Did you watch the That's... um the Red Bull ECL one v one championship? Uh, no, I didn't get to watch the ECL one. It was pretty cool, although the the downside was every single match except for one was SFSF. So if you like if you like Shadowfiend vs Shadowfiend, there's a lot of good material there. But if you don't, there's there's one game that wasn't Shadowfiend vs Shadowfiend, and it was Treant Protector vs Shadowfiend. That seems amusing. It was. Uh, Trian actually almost won. It was ZSMJ on the Trian, which is also kind of hilarious. That's even, that's even better. Yeah. I don't know. We're, we're still in the middle of the post-TI shuffle, so... Oh, I don't think VG's gonna... I think VG's pretty stable. Right well, now. if anything would happen is that ZSMJ ends up moving to a different team, but... Or CTY. Uh, either one. I but know. I don't see. think they're really gonna end up suffering that much. But, hey, post-TI nice shuffle. Any, anything can happen, but yeah, Merlini gambling on a rune gets really lucky. He didn't gamble, he spotted it with the, it's the same rune from oh, no, zero, yeah, zero. It's the same yeah. minutes zero, but he's gonna, yeah, actually the illusion rune is fantastic for this. He already knows that the rune is top now, because he left an illusion at bot. Yeah. Which is actually really neat. I mean, he managed to pick it up at like 348, so there's a, a new rune already. He uses this to scout, he knows there's an invis top. I don't think Invis is life-changing, but it is that critical extra regen. You can see that the victim doesn't even feel comfortable taking a bottle. He knows he doesn't have control of this game right now, and so a bottle wouldn't do him much without the ability to, to crow it, which of course is forbidden in the rules of this tournament. Yeah, he did manage to finally catch up in Souls, and Merlin was confident enough to actually skip another point in Necromancery, go straight into more races. Oh, he's just gonna raise him down! He gets it! I was completely wrong about the invis. I guess the lack of ability to find it and his positioning a bit away from the tower didn't give him any safe space to back off, so I was totally wrong. Merlin is securing the win with that sick invis rune, just raise, 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 and the fact that the guy didn't have his full health bar made him pretty hapless there. 4-0 for Merlini so far. Can anyone stop this MYM monster? Gotta, gotta go old school. <laughs> gotta, gotta get Zeus. Uh, I don't think Zeus is in it. No, he's... No, no. Why isn't Zeus there? That's like... I don't think Zeus versus Zeus is a very good matchup. I don't know. It just turns to... Well, it's like, the... it's like Lush Rock versus Lush Rock. I hear Zeus versus Meepo is a pretty good matchup. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's a pretty Meepo favorite. It's gonna be even better now because it's gonna be even better now because it's passive MR. It's Zeus. actually like it's actually an impossible matchup for Zeus now. I don't know. It didn't work out very well for you last time. It it didn't. That's what I'm saying. It's impossible for <laughs> Zeus. It's even worse now. It's even. I love that Meepo buff. Meepo's I wish my Meepo one it was better. I'm like 11 and 13 with him. That's a lot of Meepo games. Yeah, it's like 25, 24. I think I actually have more than that, but... Gotta rate that 50% win rate. I, I guess so. You gotta be like a Neo professional Meepo player? The guy I don't know, there's this, there's this one guy who just streams only Meepo games. I think that's the guy, yeah. He's got a 70% it, win rate. It's uh, Rat Dota. <laughs> okay. That's the name of his stream. That's funny. It's fantastic. The next victim. Yeah, I'm going to switch to stream. Alright, folks. Here at the Chicago Dota 2 Open, we've got uh, the Merlini 1v1 challenges. We've rolled Viper again, so this is the fifth game. I don't know how many total games we're running, but I think it's going to be about an hour total, so we've still got a few to go. Okay. Seeing if anybody can beat Merlini. Last time we did this in the June Chicago Dota 2 Open, uh, Merlini did lose one game for, uh, he lost to, on the Queen of Pain matchup. But here, we have him on Viper. He cleaned up the first Viper versus Viper game. He was on Radiant, uh, so the first few victims chose Dire, but now we're, they're choosing Radiant. I know I asked you this already, Alprez, but what's your take on this selection of Dire versus Radiant in this 1v1? Well, personally, I it's hard to say. Both lanes are pretty even. Normally, the advantages to Radiant come in handy when you're talking about like these jungle pulls, right? It's easier to access the easy camp yeah. from the mid lane. I don't think there's there's actually no rule about that. So uh, that's good. That's actually, very yeah, is there a formal rule? I mean, that, that's a huge. Actually, I, I'm fairly sure it's even if it's not expressly prohibited, it's probably prohibited because that would break yeah. Shadowfiend versus Shadowfiend. Radiant it, it, it would, would just, just auto win. Yeah, he would just run over here, raise t two times, get like eight souls, and come back to lane. So yeah, that that's actually kind of interesting that there were no rules about that. But 
Uh, regardless, I think it's a little bit easier in Pudge versus Pudge matchups for the Dire side to have the advantage because they have this high ground area. So they have to really ward it if they don't want to get hooked from up there. Yeah. Uh, the Dire is a little bit harder to gank because of that because, you know, the high ground is way off to the side. But you do have this jungle to juke through, which I think is a little bit better to juke through than the jungle right off to the trees here. One of the matchups um, is um, Windrunner. This jungle is a huge deal for Windrunner versus Windrunner. Um, you basically begins. have to run over at the start of the game and power shot through this if you're Radiant. Yeah, it, it's really dangerous because you're just going to get lashed to these trees yeah, here. Shouldn't. And... Shouldn't picked up by Merlini Victory. He finds out Merlini's Courier! Dyer's no Micro to send it away and the Shitty Wizard meets his doom. I love this little animation when the Shitty Wizard dies. <laughs> um... The flying one's even better, actually. But Merlini, I mean, the trade-off here is sure you get a rune. But I get an amazing creep block. It starts all the way to my side. Oh. That's the thing about going there at zero 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 is that that's, that happens. That's really interesting. Merlini actually opted to pick up level one Nether Toxin. Yeah, he changed Instead. it up. Maybe Instead he feels that the harassment is easier to do uh, when you he, when he's radiant. So as Dire, he'd just rather have the additional last setting ability. Or maybe he uh, saw maybe he did it after he saw the illusions because that's actually a pretty big deal too. Otherwise, you can get yeah, that, that last hit. You almost. That would be a big deal because it's harder to last hit against that, but. Yeah. Alright, one thing I don't like is that Merlini Victim is not using the Poison Attack on cooldown. It does have a cooldown level 1 right. and 2, so it's very important that you really just click it on cooldown, yeah. harass Merlini down that way. And Legacy Keys, probably. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. He's, it's like, uh, uh, as some... a result, though, he misses this last hit. He auto-attack a little bit early onto this creep, unfortunately. So actually, Merlini, I mean, again, jumping towards a bit of a lead on the last hits. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a slight lead. It's it's hard to really give the advantage immediately. Yeah, I don't know if that hundred goal is gonna be the biggest deal. It's One not. of the big things about the the victim though is that he did come in with more tank thanks to his circlet. second circlet. Yeah. And Merlini's extra retent's gonna be a very big deal, mostly because Merlini victim is gonna have a lot more harassing potential early on thanks to the poison attack being skilled at level one. That's true. But Merlini is already level two, so. Yeah, he's definitely couple. going to... I mean, he's going to be happy having all the region that's available. He actually... It's interesting. He's almost halfway through level 2, but he hasn't decided what to spend in just yet. Uh, he does go for the poison attack, so no, no huge surprise there. This will let him counter harass. Now, uh, well, the lane is pushing way up. He's going to get these denies. Wow, the illusion coming into play there. Uh, actually, the illusion was good because it uh, prevented the lane from... Oh, no, it didn't. It's still at the tower, so it'll push all the way back. More volatile lane positioning this time than last time, definitely. Merlini feeling very confident because he knows he has the region advantage, so he knows that he can duel this out and feel very good about it. In fact, the victim taking creep harass as well as player harass, and that's very, very tough. But he's going uh, to go in on it. No, he's not. He's, he's backing off. Yeah, that, that would have been really dangerous. Merlini does have the it's advantage really in that dangerous. trade. He has slightly more health. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're both going to salve up to full, so that's not a big deal. Merlini has, so they've, they've diverged, so he's got the Corrosive Skin on Dire, and the Radiant has the second attack in, in Poison Attack. I actually think that Corrosive Skin is better. Um, I think people are underrating it these days, and not realizing just how strong the buffs to it have been. It's really, really good. So like you can see, he, he trades so much, and it actually slows. He actually decides to go for the last hit, and now Merlini's quite low. Luckily, he still has that second salve. Merlini Victim does not, so he could actually chase. Uh, he doesn't want to get hit by the ranged creep, but still. Suddenly, Merlini's way ahead, because he's got the salve to go back to, up to full. Whereas Merlini Victim, he has one tango remaining. Like, he's got to play super conservatively now, and that'll make it harder to last hit. The other big thing is that Merlini Victim does again have that corrosive skin, and this is going to be first blood here. Yeah, Merlini's got I, the first skin. One more auto attack. Got him. He gets the first blood. That's the game. That's uh, is that the, was that the fifth game? That's that's fifth. That's Merlini five zero. Five zero. All right. Well, we'll have to see if anybody can uh, can stop Merlini because he brought his game today. Unquestionably, it's Ben Wu is just cleaning the heck up. We'll be right back in two seconds, folks.
All right, folks, here we are back at the Chicago Dota 2 uh, Open, sponsored by SteelSeries Ignite, Dustoff, and Merlini Dota, held here at the Ignite Gaming Lounge in Chicago. And Merlini is in the building, uh, schooling fools on, on all sorts of heroes, primarily Viper, Queen of Pain, and Shadow Fiend. We have a pool of eight, and they're randomized, but uh, we've only managed to get three heroes in six games. I don't have the probability calculation on me right now, but that seems a little weird. Anyway. So, Victim on the Dire, they've gone with a regen-heavy build, so maybe they're looking at some of the harassment that's been done and feeling that they want the, re the re extra regen, so... You can see only 41 damage on the Shadowfiend because it's got three branches, Tango, Healing, South, Clarity. Merlini, on the other hand, going that, uh, that build we were talking about, the Wraith Band Double Branch, which is what he went last time as well, gives you a very, very nice mix of stats. Uh, my co-caster, El Presidente, is here. How you doing, man? I am doing quite well, and I'm giving the item build favorite to Merlini. Just because of the build? Or... Yeah, just the item build. I, I, I think the item build is better from Merlini. It gives him more trading potential. Seven seven base damage, eight base damage. You yeah. can actually make the difference when you're last hitting. Right, especially when you're talking from a, a pure mechanical standpoint. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up biting Merlini and the uh, victim in the ass. Uh, it comes down to the fact that if Merlini gets two last hits before the victim gets one, that 8 damage bonus becomes a 12 damage bonus and just keeps accelerating. Right? Whereas yeah. even if Victim would need to get almost max the souls begins. to keep up with Merlini's last hits. So it's already putting him way behind. He, he started with a lot less stats as well and has some extra bank gold for a bottle. And the bottle's going to be good for Shadowfiend versus Shadowfiend. It tends to be a very safe matchup. <laughs> and that is a very bold claim. <laughs> he blows up the rune. Now, uh, let's be clear. So the one thing is, this is... So I was, I've just been informed. This is the guy who beat him last time. So uh, he's a little bit cocky, but, you know, the last time we did this, he was the only player to actually beat Merlini. So uh, he has made some interesting decisions, like we already talked about, especially with blowing up the rune. But And you can see that base damage is hurting him so much. Like, those were... Uh, there were just three hits that he probably would have gotten with 49 that he can't... Yeah, that's the fourth one. Could get that with 49, can't get it with 41. And so he's going to... I think he's really going to have to rely on pinpoint raises to, to actually make his way back into this. Yeah, he's already way behind. It's going to be almost impossible to outlast hit Merlini at this point. You're talking 61 damage versus 43. That's that's 18 damage difference. And that's, that's like being Meepo and last hitting against Chain Lightning Zeus. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? I don't know, man. Oh, hold no up. Oh, more hotkeys. Got, got no, a little bit of I don't think so. I think he just has to get some little time to compose himself. Because. Got, got to recollect himself after. Yeah, we're already seeing that because Merlini has the advantage in damage, the victim's already forced to eat through a lot of his regen earlier yeah. than he would like. Yeah. And. It, it that that's. Yeah, there it is. I told you it was hotkeys. Yeah, man, it's the legacy keys causing so much, so much trouble. They're, legacy in know. general is just causing trouble for us. I personally legacy. can't play with legacy hotkeys, so. Oh, I can't. Yeah, I'm too. I'm. I can. I can't even play with real hot, like uh, new hotkeys, <laughs> much less play with legacy keys. Ah, oh, he oh, misses the raise again. When you have the smaller mana pool, even though he does, he does have clarity, so that's an equalizer. But if Merlini sees him clarity, you can just use the, the raise three to to catch him out. And this lane's going to push as well. So just in general. Uh, we're not off to as comfortable of a start as the, the Queen of Pain game that gave this guy his win against Merlini last time. This is our last uh, 1v1 of the day, by the way. So Merlini, so far looking good to be undefeated this time, but anything can happen. We could have a, a big turnaround on, against Ben Wu's favor. But only two souls is just... Yeah, so he knows that he's not going to get souls. You can see he's going the... Oh, he tried to be sneaky, but he misses the raise. Should have used raise two, probably. Yeah, Merlini is also actually going for an earlier Shadow Raise, and that might be in large part because even if you could get more souls, frankly, at this point, he doesn't need it. Right. Right. The additional burst damage that you can harass people down with with the Shadow Raise, as well as the stronger right click, and Merlini victim is lucking out. Gets a rune? Ah, yeah. oh, it's regen, though. It's the worst rune he could possibly get. DD well, would if be he was in... lower health, it would have been a bigger deal. Yeah, he but he, he had clarity, it he was been using amazing. clarity too, so he wastes most of the clarity as a result. If that had been DD, I could see him getting back into this, honestly. Cause... Yeah, D DD would have been better. Even illusions would be very helpful at this illusions point. Illusions would be great, yeah. I don't know if you actually benefit from get souls from illusion last hits, though. Uh, you do. 
All right, I, I just gotta make sure because I don't ever play Shadow Fiend. My win rate with Shadow Fiend is like twelve percent. Uh, so illusions. The thing about illusions for Shadow Fiend, they do not benefit from your stack of souls. Yeah. So they don't get any plus. necromastery like damage bonus. Not that he it's has all, much of one anyway, so it wouldn't. Make it's it all that. plus damage. To buff Shadow Fiend, it needs to give him two uh, two agility. Instead. I don't think Shadow Fiend needs to be buffed. He's pretty good. <laughs> I don't know, they, they keep bu Oh, okay, that's interesting. Merlini Victim's actually grabbing one point in presence of the Dark Lord. Okay. Interesting. So, if yeah, you can't earn souls, I mean, why would you... Yeah, it's the, it's the pure... I am not going to have any souls, but maybe with armor debuff... I don't know, this could actually be kind of good. Well, let's see, level 1 presence of the Dark Lord against Merlini, for instance, would give him approximately a... Uh, 16% damage buff. Right. Yeah, that's not gonna make the difference here. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. it, it is if it's compared to zero, right? But he's yeah, getting chased completely under his tier 2 tower. Look how far up this wave is, Merlini just flexing his muscles a little bit here. I don't know, the irony is that Merlini Victim started off this match by saying, too bad this isn't a hero you can dive with. Well, apparently Merlini you can. proving wrong. Yeah. I think he's oh, saying that because the the last time there was HP a... on that creep again, just not having that wraith ban. Yeah, it's really rough. I mean, his his damage is now okay. It's 63, so it's it's not where Merlini's at with 21, 11, 20 souls. He's at 100 full damage. Oh, he gets DD. Oh no! He's seen it now, so now Merlini victim knows this is a DD, but that's brutal. <laughs> 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 Oh, poor victim, but it, it, uh, I don't think it's going to be possible for him to come back from this. It's going to be he, really he, tough. He needs uh, he three raises down. to land in a row and somehow to waste all the DD rune. He's down 16 last hits, like, even excluding the fact that he's playing Shadow Fiend, right? And those 16 last hits basically means that's 32 damage he's not getting. Yeah. That's all. Shadow Fiend is the worst hero to get in, in a thing like this, frankly, if you're the, um... If you're facing up against somebody like Merlini, whose me like mechanics are pretty world famous, like uh, you really want a hero where it's gonna be like a spell-based matchup, and like the last hits aren't as important. <laughs> like Type Queen of Pain is one thing. Like Merlini, the closest Merlini came to losing today was Queen of Pain again, simply because it is, as you said, such a volatile matchup. I mean, that's how Ice Ice beat 430. He just timed his spells really effectively. But as Shadow Fiend, I mean, Ray's positioning is a big deal, but it's just. It's such a mechanics-based matchup, and Merlini is just... And good decisions, too. The build was really strong. Yeah, I, I actually really like that the victim is adapting his build to compensate for the fact that he really isn't going to catch up on Souls. Yeah, I like that a lot as well. He, do you think, he's probably going to just get Presence 2, do you think? Nah, he's max on Souls. He's, he's got to grab another point. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. This you're right, you're right the max. Yeah. But, uh... It's, it's hard to say, mostly because Shadow Fiend isn't a hero with bad stat growth. He has 3 agility growth, right? right. Or 2.9. Right. Practically 3. Oh, oh wow. Those raises. He got yeah. all 4. Cleans up the wave. And now he's going to push the tower. might end up winning by tower kill. He could. I mean, D the thing about uh, clearing that wave real quick is because he has DD rune. Oh, he's actually going to use it to get uh, or the rune. It's an invis. Well, Merlini last time with Shadow Fiend used the invis to secure the game. So it could happen again, honestly. Well, if Merlini hits one more level, he could grab a point in, in Requiem and just stand the victim. <laughs> That's true. He has, um, I mean, he has this full invis Oh, time. wow. Victim is actually grabbing a second point in presence. Oh, okay. But he's screwed. Here comes. Here's raise one. Uh, uses one, so that keeps him alive for a bit, but no, the second raise. And that's a GG. Merlini defends his title this time unopposed. Was not able to be brought down even by the defending champ. And, uh... That'll be it for the 1v1s, folks. We're going to go up in about 10, 15 minutes, I think, into the next uh, 5v5 match, which is Altered State versus U, U Mad, the University of Madison team. Uh, losers bracket semifinals. I think, El Prez, you said that you were going out to get food, so you're done for the day? Yeah, I'm done for the day. All right. Thank you so much, dude. I'm sorry that we had, like, one game and it was super short. The Steam was being uncooperative, apparently. It happens. But that said, well, why don't you promote your Twitter? Tournament. It's so like exciting. Uh, my Twitter is at Dota. You can follow me there. You'll see a picture of a strange Asian-looking man. I don't know. It, it, the picture hasn't been updated in months, but uh, there's that. All right. Well, it's and, at El Prez Dota. Uh, yeah, you guys that's, that's all I got because I don't stream. All right. Well, maybe you should stream. Once you're at college, you can stream, right?
Oh, uh, probably. Well, there you go. My, my connection at my university is going to be better than the one at my house. So. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, watch for El Prez uh, on coming to a Twitch channel near you. All right, thanks, man. And, folks, we'll I go just... up to the next game ASAP.